Hey there, Comets. I am back with Chapter 5 of Frindle. Chapter 5 is called The Report. By lunchtime the next day, Nick had a bad feeling in the pit of his stomach. Seventh period was coming. He was going to have to stand up in front of Mrs. Granger's class. The eyes of everyone in the class would be glued to his face, and Mrs. Granger's eyes would be cranked up to maximum punch power. He looked over his notes again and again. The first English dictionary, the growth of the English language, William Shakespeare, words from French and German, new words, old words, new inventions, Anglo-Saxon words, Latin and Greek roots, American English, it all become a big jumble in his mind. And his grand plan from the night before, in the harsh fluorescent light of the school day, it seemed impossible. What is it with the clocks in school? When you're planning to go to the carnival after school, the clocks in every class practically run backward. And the school day lasts for about three weeks. But if you have to go to the barber or go shopping for clothes after school, zip, the whole day is over before you can blink. And today, after lunch, periods five and six went by in two ticks. As the seventh period bell rang, Mrs. Granger walked into the classroom, took four steps to her desk at the side of the room, flipped open her attendance book, glanced out at the class and made two little check marks. Then, looking up at Nick, she said, I think we have a little report to begin our class today, Nicholas. 15 seconds into seven, the seventh period and Nick was on stage. This lady plays for keeps, thought Nick. He gulped, grabbed his crumpled note cards and his book bag and walked to the front of the room. He stood next to the giant dictionary on its little table and Mrs. Granger walked to the back of the classroom and sat primly on a tall stool next to the bookcases. She was wearing her blue uniform. Taking a deep breath, Nick began. Well, the first thing I learned is that the first English dictionary, Mrs. Granger interrupted. Excuse me, Nicholas, but does your report have a title? Nick looked blankly at her. A uh, title? N no, I, I didn't make a title. Class, please remember to include a title whenever you prepare an oral or written report. Now, please go on, Nicholas. And she smiled and nodded at him. Nick began again. Looking right at Mrs. Granger, he said, The dictionary. A couple of kids thought that was funny, but Nick played it straight and just kept talking. A lot of people think that the first English dictionary was put together in the 1700s by a man named Samuel Johnson. He lived in London, England. He was real smart and he wrote lots of books. And he wanted all the other people to have a good dictionary to use, so he made one. But there were other dictionaries before his. The thing was different about Johnson's dictionary was its size, first of all. He had over 43,000 words in it. The class made a bunch of noise at this big number. Oh, and wow, and stuff like that. And Nick lost his concentration. He glanced up at Mrs. Granger, expecting to see those eyes drilling a hole into him. But they weren't. They were almost friendly, in a teachery kind of way. She shushed, shushed the class and said, Go on, Nicholas. That's a fine beginning. Nick almost smiled, but he saw all the kids staring at him, so he gripped his note cards even tighter and jumped back in. The other thing that Samuel Johnson did that was special was to choose the words he thought were most important, and then give lots of examples showing how the words got used by people. For example, he showed how the word take could be used in 113 different ways. Nick's report went on smoothly for 12 minutes. Nick was surprised at how easy it was to stand there and talk about this stuff. At the end of the first five minutes, Mrs. Granger had to stop Nick again to say, class, it is not good manners to yawn out loud or to put your heads down on your desks when someone is giving an oral report. No one in the class cared one little bit about the report, except Mrs. Granger. Every time Nick glanced up, she was smiling and her eyes were not the least bit icy or sharp. She was eating the stuff up, listening and nodding, and every once in a while she would say, very good point, or yes, that's exactly right. By the next time Nick looked up, he saw Mrs. Granger sneaking a look at her watch. 18 minutes gone. Maybe his idea was gonna work after all. Time for phase two. Reaching into his book bag, Nick pulled out the red dictionary he had brought from home the one that most of the kids had, the one Mrs. Granger said they should use. Nick said, this is the dictionary that I use at home for my vocabulary work. And 
and I opened it up last night to the very front, and right there I found out a lot about how the dictionary was made, right in this book. So I thought some of the ideas would be a good part of my report. It says here, Nicholas, Nick looked up. Mrs. Granger got off her tall stool, and its wooden legs made a screech on the linoleum. Heads snapped to attention, and the class was silent again. Mrs. Granger smiled, raised her eyebrows, and pointed at her watch. Nicholas, I think the class should read that at them home at home themselves. Now, John's hand was up in the air, and at Mrs. Granger's nod, he said, but I don't have that dictionary at home, Mrs. Granger. I have the blue one. And several other kids immediately said, me too. Mrs. Granger tried not to show that she was annoyed. Very well, Nick, but it shouldn't take too long. We have other things to do today. Nick kept his eyes open wide and nodded, adjusted his glasses on his nose and began to read. Without question, this modern American dictionary is one of the most surprisingly complex and profound documents ever to be created, for it embodies unparalleled etymological detail, reflecting not only superb lexicographic diction scholarship, but also the dreams and speech and imaginative talents of millions of people over thousands of years. For every person who has ever spoken or written in English has had a hand in its making. It was a long article and the kids were bored to death. But no one looked bored at all. Every kid in the room knew now that the period was more than half over and that Nick's report just wasn't a report. It was one of the greatest time wasters he had ever invented. Mrs. Granger knew it too. She had edged around from the back of the room to the side near the windows. Nick glanced up at her now, and then as he read, and each time Mrs. Granger's eyes clip, clicked up to a new power level. After eight minutes of Nick's best nonstop reading, her eyes were practically burning holes in the chalkboard behind him. There were only 10 minutes left in the seventh period. When he took a breath of air to start a new paragraph, Mrs. Granger cut him off. That's a fine place to stop, Nicholas. Class, let's all give him a round of applause for his report. The applause didn't last long. As Nick took his book bag and notes and sat down, Mrs. Granger's eyes went back to almost normal, and she actually smiled at him. Although your report was a little long, she paused to let that sink in, it was quite a good one. And isn't it fascinating that English has more different words than any other language used anywhere in the world? She pointed at her large dictionary. <coughs> that one book contains definitions of more than 450,000 words. Now, wasn't I right, Nicholas? All this will mean so much more since you learned about it on your own. Mrs. Granger was beaming at him. Nick sank lower in his chair. This was worse than writing the report, worse than standing up to give it. He was being treated like, like the teacher's pet. And he had the feeling she was doing it on purpose. His reputation was in great danger. So he launched another question. He raised his hand and he didn't even wait for Mrs. Granger to call on him. Yeah, but you know, I still really don't get the idea of why words all mean different things. Like, who says that D-O-G means the thing that goes woof and wags its tail? Who says so? And Mrs. Granger took the bait. Who says dog means dog? You do, Nicholas. You and me and everyone in this class and this school and this town and this state and this country. We all agree. If we lived in France, we would all agree that the right word for that hairy four-legged creature was a different word. Chien. It sounds like Chien, but it means D-O-G means to us. And in Germany, they'd say Hund, and so on, all around the globe. But if all of us in this room decided to call that creature something else, and if everyone else did too, that's what it would be called. And one day, it would be written in the dictionary that way. We decide what goes in that book. And she pointed at the giant dictionary, and she looked right at Nick, and she smiled again. Then Mrs. Granger went on. But of course, that dictionary was worked on by hundreds of very smart people for many years. So as far as we are concerned, that dictionary is the law. Laws can change, of course, but only if they need to. There may be new words that need to be made, but the ones in that book have been put there for good reasons. Mrs. Granger took a look at the clock, eight minutes left. Now then, for today, you were to have the exercises beginning on page 12 in your Words Alive book. Please get out your papers, Sarah. Will you read the first sentence, identify the mistake, and then tell us how you corrected it? Mrs. Granger jammed the whole day's work into that last eight minutes, a blur of verbs and nouns and prepositions, and yes, 
there was another homework assignment. And Nick shouldn't try to sidetrack Mrs. G again. He had slowed her down a little, but had he stopped her? No way. She was unstoppable. At least for today. Well, that was chapter five of Frindle. I hope you liked it. Remember, comments, I want you to be reading every day. It's so important that you are. I miss you. I'll be back later this week. Bye.